Hello everyone, this is Tim Stack from the Utah Education Network and in this tutorial I want to talk about using uh, the iMovie app to create a narrated slideshow. Uh, now lots of applications for this in the classroom from um, creating reports to storytelling, uh, all sort of for, for all ages as well, all grade levels I think can do interesting projects with iMovie that don't necessarily need to involve actual video. Okay, so we're just going to use still images today. All right, so first of all, uh, let's say I just want to get started on a new project. So I'm going to uh, click this plus button down here in the along the bottom. Okay, so it gives me a chance to start. I just want to do a new project. All right, so I get a blank uh, canvas here, a uh, new project. So just quick, a couple things about iMovie. Um, it's arranged in sort of three main uh, regions. So this region along the bottom, this big long one here, that's where we're going to build our project. Um, that's where we're going to line stuff up, organize it, edit it, um, and create stuff down here. Up here in the upper right hand corner is the spot where it's our monitor. We get to see what our project looks like. Um, it also lets us do do some editing, especially with still images. So let's just control the, the pan and the zoom. We do that up in this upper right hand region. Over here on the left is the spot where we have access to the media um, that we that we want to use or that we have uh, available to us. So you can see right now I have uh, video selected. So I'm seeing the video clips that I've taken with my camera. Um, if I click on this button here, I'll see all the uh, still images that I have available. So this is accessing uh, my uh, photo library and you can kind of see how it's organized there and then there's a music button uh, right here as well and that takes me to the the built-in uh, audio files okay so you can see there's uh, theme music and sound effects and then if I have my own music in uh, iTunes on this device I will be able to see those uh, pieces of music as well. All right, so uh, let's get started. Let's say I wanted to make a narrated slideshow. So I'm going to go to my images. So I already have uh, some images in um, my, uh, oops, let me just get this to load up. Might take a second here to load up. Um, there we go, right here. So I've already got some images uh, that I want to use maybe to do a report or to tell a story. So these are photos that have already been taken. Now to add these to my project, to add these down here, all I need to do is tap on the ones I want to use. So as I tap on these, you'll see it does a little hop down to my timeline. Um, and so I can go through and start adding these in the order, of course, that I want them uh, to exist in my narrated slideshow or in my story or in my report. Okay, so I'll put a few of these in. Uh, once they get down there um, in my timeline, um, if I tap on one of them, you'll see it comes up to where I can start uh, controlling what this image does. So by default, these come up and their uh, their duration is five minutes. I mean, five minutes, five seconds. Um, and if I decide I want them in a different order, all I have to do is tap and hold. And you can see when I tap and hold, it pops, out, it pops up and I can adjust the order that these go into. So maybe I want um, this picture of all these newspaper um, machines to be the first thing. Um, now, as these uh, come in, I would like to uh, adjust their length. So all I have to do is tap on the one I want to adjust and use one of the yellow handles to extend and I can see um, up in my preview window it's showing me like I'm right about 10 seconds for this one. Down in my timeline I can see that it says 26. So you can see two different views. The one in the, up in the preview window and my monitor window shows how long this image will be. The time that's showing up down there uh, in the timeline is showing the total duration of my slideshow so far. Okay, so I can spend a little time getting these to be the how long I want them to be on the screen. So maybe I need this one a little longer, um, and I can adjust these after I do the the voiceover, after I do do the narration. So I'm not too worried about getting them exactly right right now. Okay, so that maybe I'm going to do a little narration across this first image. 
Okay, and when I tap on that image, or I should say, when I just sort of slide this across the playhead, of course the playhead is that red line right down the middle. Um, so wherever, wherever that playhead is, that's what I'm seeing in my monitor. And you can see that that image is moving. It has a little zoom and a pan. And on the Macintosh computer, that's called the Ken Burns effect, named after the uh, famous uh, filmmaker who's made uh, documentaries for PBS, Civil War, baseball, jazz, World War II, uh, a lot of uh, national parks, some really good ones. But he, um, this is one of the techniques he uses for the still images. So a little zoom and a little pan. Now, um, if I tap on the image, I get some editing tools and they're a little hard to see. So up here in, in the top, you can see there's a little start and end button and then a done button. Okay, so if I wanted to control where this zoom starts, Okay, so I might say, all right, well, I'm going to click on the end there to get out of that mode. Okay, so um, now I can say, okay, I want to adjust the start of this image. So let's say I want to start maybe zoomed in close on one of these mailboxes. So I, I just pinch to zoom and then drag it to where I want it to start. Okay, and then I'm going to click that's where I want it to start. Okay, and then I'm going to go um, to the end here and adjust this. Okay, you know what, I'm doing that backwards, aren't I? Okay, so where it is right now, you can see that the start is grayed out. That means I'm working on the start. Okay, so I can zoom in on this red mailbox. Okay, that's where I want it to start. And then I'm going to click the end button. And here's where I can adjust what it, where it's going to end. Okay, so I pinch and, and drag. So now, starts on that red mailbox and over that much time it zooms out to see the whole picture. Okay, So I could go through and adjust these automatically. Now, but not automatically, I could adjust them manually. Now, they automatically uh, iMovie puts in sort of random movements. So they're, they're little, each one is a little bit different. Um, like this one, if I really want to see the rest of this teacher's head, I might come here and move this down so I can see the whole face. So now it starts up high and by the time it's down here I can see the whole face. I also might kind of like it if it's zoomed out a tiny bit because that's a little close. Okay. So now it comes in and settles down like that. Okay. So pretty nice way to uh, adjust these narrated slideshows. Um, now with that much done I might decide, gosh, I, I need I need another image, and I want it to be, you know, I don't have it here. I want to create a title. So, if a student is creating a story and they want to create, draw the pictures, um, there are lots of whiteboard tools out there. So you could go to uh, one of the simple whiteboard tools, let's say like Sketch, and I could draw on Sketch. Okay, so just a simple drawing program. So if I was drawing an illustration, um, and you're going to have to suffer through me uh, drawing a picture, so we'll just pretend that I'm a little bit better than stick figures, which I'm not really. So let's say I draw uh, my little illustration for the part of the story th that I want to do. Okay, so now I've got that in Sketch, but now I need to send that to a place where that I, where I can use it in my project. So I go to that Share button, and you can see the options there, Camera Roll. Okay, so I just sent that to my Camera Roll. So now when I go back to iMovie and go into the, my Images and into my Camera Roll, that image that I just created is there available for me to drop into my project. Okay, so now I've got it in there. Now, this one is one I maybe it's a title and I don't really want it to do the Ken Burns. So if you don't want that pan in the zoom, all you need to do is um, set the, the start and the end to the same zoom and the same position. And then, um, I didn't get that quite right, but pretty close. Uh, let me get it right down to there. Get that one in the same place, and that might. So now I've got it. So it's not doing a pan and a zoom. Okay. So I anything any of the other apps on here that I can create images with, I can I can send those to my camera roll, bring those right into my project. Another quick example, you, um, uh, and is to use one of the comic creators, uh, and this one is Strip Design. So let's say I want to create. Um, 
a, a little a little different image to, you know with a few more effects on it so I might come in here and create a a comic so let me just show you how this works um, and I know we have some other tutorials about um, this this kind of a tool but I'm gonna just quickly add some photos here I can kinda get them out of the same place if I want to okay let me just drop a few in so I'm just tapping right on the little um, uh, the section and I'm gonna put a few images in so once these images go in of course, the, one of the fun things about this tool is that I can, can make it look like a comic. So if I select this one, come down to the bottom and look under filters, and there's a lot of options here for the filter. I think I'll just go straight to the comic one, and you can see that once I have the comic in there, I have a little slider if I want to adjust how much of an effect it is. So I'm just going to go drop this on each one of these really quick. So I'm going to tap on the next one, filter, comic. I'm going to make them all the same. Okay, so now I have uh, uh, that much so far. Now, um, of course, I might want to add a call out or some text, and that's what this add button is down here. So you can see I can add balloons, I could add another cell and fit it in, I could add a text effect. Let's just do one of these text effects. Um, okay, so there's the text effect that goes in. If I double tap on it, I can type in what I want to have this text effect say. Okay, and I'm done with that, and there it is, and I can rotate it around, make it bigger. Okay, so I've just created another graphic, and I'm going to use this as the start um, of my iMovie, and I can send this over to iMovie, but <clears throat> uh, there's one problem. The dimensions of it aren't quite right. Part of it's going to get cut off. Um, iMovie is creating a 16 by 9 um, shape which is kind of that widescreen shape. So if I'm here in Strip Design, I just want to make sure when I send this out, um, that I get that kind of that shaped picture. Um, so there's my picture and I need to change its shape. Now I have just forgotten how to do that. So give me a second here. Let me just see if I go to share. Okay, and share. This is how you get it out. So you can see this is how I can send it to my photo album. But before I do that, I kind of want to see if I can adjust its dimension. And I know I can. I've just got to remember where. Okay, okay, okay. Let's see this page. Oh, there it is. So once I'm in this page view, I clicked on page, and along the bottom there, you can see it says size. And I can choose 16 by 9, so, so it makes it kind of a different shape. And I'm going to share that out. Okay, and then I'm going to click that share button again and send it to my photo albums. Okay, so now I've got a copy of that. Now I can head right back to iMovie. Whoops, let's head back here to iMovie. And that image is going to be available to me over here in my photos. Go to my camera roll. So there it is, ready to, ready to drop in. Okay. So now I've just got that image dropped in. I'm going to move it. So I just tapped and held, moved it to the front. This one, my little sketch here, I'm going to just poof that out of there. So this one now is my title slide, and I just want to make sure that it's not doing the Ken Burns effect. So I just pinched it and got it positioned right. Go to the start, pinch that, get it positioned right. Now that's done. So there is my starting slide without any movement. Okay, now maybe I'm ready to narrate this. So the narration uh, goes pretty easy. So I'm just going to kind of position uh, my playhead about where I want my narration to start. Over on the right hand side you'll see a microphone button. Click that microphone and it, can, it does a little test here of my microphone. Okay, so I want to make sure that that's loud enough. Once I get it loud enough, click record. Gives me a little countdown and now it's recording my voice. Okay, or anything it picks up in the microphone. So I'm just using the built-in microphone. Of course, if you do a Google search for iPad mics, you'll get lots of options if you need a little bit better uh, microphone. So I'm doing the recording. I'm going to tap on stop. Um, of course, I can listen to it right here. You can see I can if listen to it. If it sounds good, I can click accept. If I want to, if I need a redo, just do a retake there. I'm going to tap on accept. And you see that down here along the bottom, I've got this little um, this little clip, which is that audio recording. If I need to adjust it, move it around, um, I'm just tap and hold. It pops out a line. I can move it around. And now I wanted that narration to go right under this one picture, and it looks like my narration is a little bit shorter. 
Okay, so if I need to adjust the length of the picture, I can just tap on it, slide that back, <coughs> excuse me, and it's ready to go. One last thing uh, here, I might want to add uh, some music, some background music. So if I do theme music, and I'll just pick um, just a nice simple one of these, I can drop that in. And now I've got this uh, nice little project with my narration, um, some background music. The background music should automatically duck. Uh, when it comes time to, for you to hear my audio, meaning the background music should get softer uh, when it recognizes there's a narration above it. So with that much, maybe I'm finished. Okay, if I go back to my main screen, okay, there's my project that I've been working on. So right here, I can use this button to play it full size. Now before I can play it full screen, it'll want well, if I tap on it, you'll see it wants to um, optimize it, and it'll take a few minutes to render it as a movie. I'm going to tap on No to that. Um, okay, so it'll play back without being optimized, but it'll play back much nicer if you do let it optimize. And then there's a share button here. So if I wanted to um, get this out of iTunes, I mean iMovie, I was done editing it, I can take it out of iMovie, send a copy of it to my camera roll, or you can see I can upload it directly to some of these uh, video sharing places. Uh, I can send it to iTunes, which means that it'll transfer this project onto my uh, computer and it would have to be a Mac computer and continue to edit it in the desktop version of I, iMovie. So uh, hopefully you've enjoyed that and give you some ideas. It's a tool that I really think that students can make good use of. Thanks for watching.